Hello, everybody, um, and welcome to the, I'm going to show you my top 10 favorite books and then have it go over 10 because I can't decide anything. And the longer I wait, the more books are going to show up. So um, I was going to wait a couple more days to put this together, and then I'm like, no, 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 this has to go right now. So. Um, I kind of don't know where to start, so I think I'm going to start with the ones that you guys are already going to know because of the read-alongs we've done recently. So, Kurt Vonnegut's Breakfast of Champions. Um, it's a laugh riot. It's a tearjerker. It's uh, society under a microscope. It's everything you want it to be. It's fantastic. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. The um, group read, I guess, of this will end today, so um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you are on Discord, I'm going to stop by there in a little bit and see what everyone thought of it, um, because I love it. So, um, and then we could discuss, or debate, or what have you. Oh man, there's even more over there. Crap, I forgot I put this there. Okay, well, you know, we'll figure this out. It'll, it'll be okay. Um, next, where should I go? Let's go here because I brought this up yesterday. Um, William S. Burroughs. I, I don't know what I like better. See, when you like love an author let's say and you love their work they can do something totally fucking weird and off the wall like naked lunch or just tell like a straight story like junkie and like they're they both completely work so if you like stuff that is more straightforward uh and the hippos were boiled in their tanks, junky, queer, um, what else would fall under that? I mean, some of the, like, I don't want to say lower end, but lesser known stuff would definitely fall under that. Um, but if you like the weird stuff where, like, so many things are happening and a lot of it doesn't make sense and it's just kind of like a bunch of vignettes that are kind of glued together to try to tell some sort of cohesive-ish story, then, like, Naked Lunch is where you'd want to go. And, um, I actually have, um, finished the Nova Trilogy. Um, I'll probably do a video on that, but, um, The Soft Machine, The Ticket That Exploded, and Nova Express, because those were included on Audible. So I snapped those up and just listened to all three of them back to back. Um, and the first time I read Soft Machine, I was really not interested in it. But the copy of it I had was a much older copy, and it didn't have the introduction that the fourth edition has. And the fourth edition introduction got me so interested in all of the madness about how many different like and when we're talking when we're talking like editions of these books like sometimes upwards of like 50,000 words of the book are completely different like so you're it's like a completely different book and there was so much weirdness just on that and um what, like, Burroughs wanted and what the publishers wanted and what ended up coming out, that the entire ride for the Nova Trilogy books um, made reading those books, for me, way more exciting and fun. So... <clears throat> again, those are a lot more like Naked Lunch. Probably Nova Express is the most accessible, I guess. Like, it's not as fucking weird. 
is the other two. But, um, yeah, so, but, like, back, see, I'm doing a review. I'm not supposed to be doing that. So, Naked Lunch or Junkie, um, either of these could take this spot in the, in my top whatever the fuck this is. So, those are good. And probably what I'm going to do is I'll put a poll up for... I mean, I guess it would be for November, so I'm not going to do it anytime soon because, um, yeah, we'll get to that. Why am I, why am I pulling the cart before the horse here? Um, okay. So here are a couple others. I don't even know what number I'm on anymore. I don't give a shit. I'm just showing you guys books now. Um, Frankenstein is one of my favorite books ever. I probably, it's probably not true anymore, but, um, for a long time, I probably have read this book more than any other book that I have, um, but I don't think that's true anymore. I think there's been a couple that go way past it. Um, <clears throat> but this is just a amazing horror story. It's a beautiful story of um, being misunderstood. It's a wonderful story about um, just trying to earn the love and respect of your father. Um, <clears throat> fuck, man. This book is so fucking good. And to think of how this book came about, it's legendary. And it probably, there's probably a lot more of it that is of myth than of reality, but I don't give a shit. Like, everything surrounding this book was, like, destined to me. Like, the, I don't know. If you haven't read Frankenstein, <clears throat> we are going to read it in October along with Dracula. I wanted to do um, one book a week, but I don't know if people will be able to keep up with that. So um, maybe we'll just do Frank and Drac in October and have that be that. The other book here, <clears throat> this is seriously, if you like to feel like shit after you read a book. Like, if to you, a good book makes you feel like you want to kill yourself afterwards, and I know there's a lot of you out there, because I see the crap that you talk about on your channel. So, if you like wanting to fucking die after you read a book, read On the Beach by Neville Shoe. Like, this is probably my favorite um, the end of the world slash post-apocalyptic. It's not, it's, it's right on the cusp of post-apocalyptic. It's like apocalyptic. Okay. Um, but just the, the strange hope slash acceptance makes this book insane to me. And um, I think that almost makes you feel more like shit than um, if the book was just like all throughout super fucking depressing. Knowing that these people know it's the end of their life and they're just going about their business and trying to make the best out of it. And I'm sitting here bitching about having to pay my water bill. You know what I'm saying? It makes you, it makes you feel like a piece of shit. So if you like to feel like crap on the beach, definitely, definitely for you. And then a fun fact, if you guys like fun facts, um, the Morrissey jingle, um, every day is like Sunday. It's about this book or it was inspired by this book. So for all the Morrissey fans out there and Smiths fans who haven't read this book, shame on you fuckers. Shame on you fuckers. Okay? Yeah. Shame. Shame, shame, I know your name. Um, let me see here. Where are we going? I guess we'll just keep this bit going here. Um, these books are some of my favorite books. Um, and they probably would not have made, like, my top ten list 
if there hadn't been so much bullshit going on on booktube and people saying stupid shit and doing stupid fucking things so um, i wanted to go over these because i really feel like there is a huge population of people who are on booktube who say dumb shit that have not read these books and if they had read these books they would know that the things they're saying are fucking like bad things to say okay so we are going to learn from literature today folks so um first we have george orwell 1984 this book is fucking crazy and prophetic to a fucking t and if you and I love this cover, by the way, just the eyeball thing. I fucking wrecked it. I can't remember what happened. I think I it was on the floor and I put something on it and I like poked a hole right there. But anyway, so this book, if you think the things you say about like what people can and cannot read and what people should and should not read, what people can and cannot say and should and should not say. If you're one of those people who like to like put rules on everybody, read this book so you could feel like a total piece of shit about yourself and like ask for forgiveness. Um, yeah, like Big Brother, all that shit. It comes from right here, people. So it's some good shit. So take a look at that. Um, also, take a look at Fahrenheit 451. It's a book about people burning books because the ideas in books are bad. Does that, does that, does it, does, does that strike a chord with you people? Does that? Because it should. Those are the bad guys. The bad guys in this book, you idiots. Fuck, I can't believe I have to fucking explain this shit to you people. And then, finally, I'm going to go so far as to bring in A Clockwork Orange, okay? Because I feel like there's a lot of people on BookTube who want to reform people. And by reform people, I mean just agree with their fucking views all the time, okay? And if you don't agree with their views, you are not... A person person this book not only has a beautiful cover but um and had a really fun movie made out of it oh he said the movie was fun he's an asshole yeah um the language in this book is really fun and confusing at times and makes you like dig in to like find more stuff out but the thought behind this, the thought about rehabilitation, and the thought about what it takes to make someone a productive member of society, or a productive member of BookTube, um, I think this rings true just as well, okay? So that's three books that you motherfuckers haven't read, but you're running your flapper over. Fucking hell, dude. Now you got me all fucking mad. Okay, so now we're going to go into these. Um, these are books that everyone should read because you fucking should read them. And that's it. So we have Dost, Notes from Underground. This is an amazing book. I fucking love it. Um, you feel it. You feel... You feel... Well, at least I do. I don't know what the fuck you guys feel like. I have felt like an outcast. I felt like ostracized by my family. I felt like nobody understands me. I feel like my mouth gets me into trouble a lot. Um, I have a lot of these like feelings and shit. And oh, you know what I fucking did? I found it. And I fucking did this. Motherfucker. I put it right there so I wouldn't fucking forget it. Ugh. Trying to pull a chair over carpet. 
Okay, so like these books kind of all go together. Okay, so definitely read Notes of Underhand. Yep, sure, you mean. And then Newt Hampson's Hunger. Whenever I talk about this book, I get a bunch of shit because this motherfucker was a Nazi because he supported Germany during World War II. Okay, whatever, that happened. This was before that, and this is a good fucking book. He, his whole life was ruined. He got um, exiled. All of his money was taken from him. He died a horrible death, and he was a fucking human piece of shit, I guess. Okay? But before that, he was a fucking amazing writer, and this is one of the books he wrote. And this book fucking speaks to motherfuckers. It's not about being a Nazi, okay? It's about starving and, like, being a starving artist and shit like that. If you like, if you're one of those people who gave me a bunch of shit when I was talking about um, George Orwell's um, Down and Out and Paris and London and shit, read this, and you'll see why I was like, oh, like, I, I think I've seen that done better by other people. This is one of those circumstances. This book is amazing. Um, so check it out. Um, and then we will do this one next. Um, the Stranger by Albiakiangu. This book, um, this book probably shook me to the core more than anything else. Um, because this was, I've said it before, this is probably the first time I felt like a complete kinship with like the main character of a book. Whereas as I was reading it, I'm like, oh yeah, I would do that. That's what I would have said. That's what I would do. So, um, and I, I just, I had never, I had never felt that to the extent of this until this book. So, um, it's kind of like a book where, like, the story's like, there's a dude, and things happen around him, and he observes these things, and then accidentally gets involved in it, and it's, I don't even want to say accidentally, it was just, that was the thing to do at the time, and it makes perfect sense. It's just, this is a really fucking good book. Um, I just, I, it made me feel almost like I was reading, like, my life told by somebody else, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it was just, it was heavy for me. So I don't know if it'll be heavy for you, but I had never, I have never read a book like this. And since this is, like, my list, suck it. Um, and then here's a funny thing. I wanted to show you a book called The Trial by Kafka. And I can't find it anywhere. I've been looking all over for it the last three days, and I can't find it. Um, we have books in numerous rooms throughout the house now on different bookcases. Books behind books, stacked under books, and then we still have boxes of books, too. Um, so for a novel, The Trial, hands down. Like, that. that's fucking good. And it kind of goes with the Stranger by Camus, um, Notes by Dost, and um, Hunger by Hampson. Like, I, I feel like they all kind of weave, like, this awesome fucking blanket of insanity kind of thing. But the thing is, I can find it. And I have, like, four different copies of Kafka short stories. And... None of them have fucking dust jackets. What the fuck is this? Like, I kept pulling them. I'm like, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And I know I have that um, kind of rubbery cover Barnes & Noble edition with the big cockroach on it. Um, and I don't know where the fuck that is. So, like, I've just, I've, I don't know. I've been looking all over the fucking place for either that or the trial, and I can't find it. But anytime you find a Kafka short story collection... 
it's probably going to have Metamorphosis and In the Penal Colony in it, and those two alone are worth the price of admission. So, um, even if you can't get your hands on the trial, if you have Metamorphosis and In the Penal Colony, read those along with these other guys over here, and you'll be fucking perfect. You'll be perfect. Okay, is that... Okay, I still have a stack here that I want to get to. Now, I wanted to put some Harry Winnington in here because I believe he plots better than anyone in the history of forever. And, um, but there's not a single book of his that I think is like the greatest book of all time. Like Night for Screaming holds a place in my heart because that was the first one of his I read. But I don't know if I'm just feeling like that's his best book because I read it first or if it's because it really is. So um, if you come across Night for Screaming, pick that up. But when it comes to staccato prose and um, dialogue that is fucking wittier than anything... You have to go with Raymond Chandler, okay? And um, Raymond Chandler, his Philip Marlowe books, um, Lady in the Lake is, I know, just so you guys know, I love these editions, this like minimalistic artwork. Uh, I just think they're gorgeous. But Lady in the Lake is, I feel like the strongest kinship to because most of it takes place and he called it something different, but in the Big Bear area where I'm living now and where I was living earlier. And if when it's not taking place there, it's taking place in L.A. So it's like everything about this book just like screams like familiarity, familiarity. Oh, my God. To me, I'm a writer. And um, it's just it's a wonderful book. And. Things are so quick, and the dialogue is so fucking good, dude. Um, the metaphors Chandler uses are fucking amazing. Um, I know a lot of people, like, prefer Dashiell Hammett over Raymond Chandler, and I've never understood it. I just have never, ever, ever understood it. Hammett's good. But, like, I don't think he fucking holds a candle to fucking Chandler. So, um, that, that's gonna piss some people off, too. But anyway, so, um, like, The Long Goodbye or The Big Sleep, you're good as shit with those. Um, just Lady in the Lake is my favorite. So, this is my fucking list. Okay, and then, um, Ask the Dust. By John Fante. Um, this book is fucking amazing. Kind of for the same way that um, Chandler is amazing. The prose is very staccato. It's very um, boom, boom, boom. Things happen. You get to it. Um, there's not a lot of meandering about bullshit. You know? Um, and I mean, again, if that's the kind of shit you like, I could have been talking about uh, The Sun Also Rises, but um, I like this story a lot better. Um, and then again, uh, this takes place in L.A. and like the Bunker Hill area, and so I am fond of it for that reason, too. But it's, um, this is about this uh, Italian dude, like an like, a, I think he's, like, first generation in America, Italian dude, and he falls for um, this uh, Mexican waitress, and there's all sorts of uh, strange societal things, because this takes place in the 30s, so there's all these, like... times where they throw out like slurs at each other um 
to like try to make themselves feel better or to try to hurt the other person, but they're both so fucking broken and um fucked in this time period anyway that like I don't I don't know a good way to explain it, but like he's a struggling writer, starving the whole deal. Um but like you know when people talk about like oh you know I don't like it when there's like derogatory shit in a book and uh all this other shit. And a lot of times that derogatory shit is in there just to like shock people or do something. In this book, the derogatory shit's in there to make the person who said whatever that was feel small. If that makes sense. Like, I feel like if you're ever going to do something like that, like, follow the example of this book. Because it's only done when the character feels cornered, and then they do it, and then they immediately feel like the biggest piece of shit on the fucking planet. And that's kind of how stuff like that should be if, like, anyone ever does anything like that. They should feel like a fucking piece of shit afterwards. Um, but that's not what this book's about. That was just something that sparked my memory of this after hearing the videos that have been going around the last couple of weeks. But anyway, so this is a fucking great book. Um, it's quick. It's snappy. Um, and all these books, every single one of these books, like, at least for me, it, like, makes my soul feel. Like, it makes, like, it feels like there's, like, a part of my chest opening up and being yanked on. And, um, I know not everyone will have those same emotions off of the books I'm showing you, but again, this is my list and this is what I think. So that's it. Now, um, I wasn't going to do these. I was going to show you this one because this is what we're starting to read tomorrow in the, um, group read, um, uh, Charles Bukowski's poll. It's, uh, it's, it, it goes really good when you read Chandler and then go to this, um, it's it's parts Philip Marlowe and parts Mike Hammer and then parts um I don't know like George Carlin like I I, I don't know another way of putting it it's really funny it's a detective story that um I mean it has to do with everything from uh catching a wife in the act of adultery to trying to find this bird to trying to get rid of aliens to um like it, it's just it's all over the place oh and then trying to find somebody who um cheated um lady death and um is still walking around like, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's all over the place, and it's fucking hysterical. So, I really hope everyone joins me uh, reading this in September. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. But, I was thinking, um, I've been trying to read a lot of stuff lately. Like, different stuff. Stuff that I've never read. Stuff that I've seen people talk about. And I've been, like really fucking let down and um you know like you might want to blame my add or whatever like that you can if you want but um it's still the fact that i'm still like err um says something so i wanted to kind of go over some other stuff here and the first one I'm going to do is post office. Like, I can't sit here and say that I don't like Bukowski. I can't sit here and say, like, oh, you know, you guys are too hard on Bukowski. Da -da 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 -da. I'm just telling you, I fucking love it. Like, I can't not love it. If there were people who could do what he did, I probably wouldn't be reading Bukowski. 
but um, so few people can pull it off. And so, anyway, there are, uh, what, six books in the um, Henry Chinaski um, story, and this was the first one published, but this is like the middle story. This is the first Bukowski I ever read, Post Office. Um, it's so fucking good. And, like, the whole reason why I got into Bukowski in the first place was when I first started putting out um, short stories, like, in 2012, uh, 2013, on uh, Amazon, uh, I got compared to two writers, um, Bukowski and um, Chuck Polnick. I can never say his last name. Um, and so I was like, oh, shit, like, if there's people writing stuff like what I'm writing, like, that would be cool, because I'm only writing the stuff I'm writing, because that's what I would want to read. So I checked out Bukowski and Polnick, and um, I didn't like Chuck that much. Um, it seemed like the stuff that I read was more, I don't know, it just, it seemed like someone up here looking down at you trying to be gross and weird with you, whereas Bukowski seemed like he was just trying to be normal on the level with you, and all the gross and weird shit was just the stuff that happened along with the story. So, um, I just gravitated a lot more towards Bukowski. And um, the Chinaski saga is great. I think Post Office, I don't know if it's the best, but it's the one I have the fondest memories of. So there's that. And then um, lastly, just because I read this again the other day, Hot Water Music is like the best fucking short story collection of his. Now, <clears throat> uh, might do another video about this where I'm going to actually challenge people with something. Um, but this fucking goddamn book, dude, it is so funny. Um, it has like you kiss Lily, um, less delicate than the locust, uh, hot lady, uh, just all these like great fucking stories that are just like hysterical. What else is in here? That's like really good. Um, come on, just give me a TOC, fucker. Um, oh god, the praying mantis, yeah, fooling Marie. Um, uh, there's just so much good stuff in here, and like this, like for the longest time, this has been my favorite. Bukowski short story collection and um that could change tomorrow like I I might like South and North, North better or um, Tales of Ordinary Madness better but um as of right now like this is still to me like the high watermark for his short storytelling um oh, it's so funny but anyway so those that's that's my fucking list of 10 books um that I think are like the 10 best books out there. And there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to put on here. So like King and Yellow. Oh, King and Yellow. I wanted to put in there. But I only like half the book really. And the other half isn't that good. And then there was like um, Conan collections. But I'm not a huge fan of the Conan collections. Depending on who did them. Um, and then if I just took like the entire Conan everything, you would have a bunch of fragments and, like, unfinished stuff, so I'm like, oh, I don't know if that um, is legit for this kind of thing, so um, let me know what you think down below. If you need to yell at me about fucking liking Hanson, go ahead and fucking do it. Um, or Bukowski, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so let me know down below. I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a challenge video here this week too. So I will see you guys later. Bye bye.